Okay, we have entered the painting stage. Now, as you can see, it's grey. Originally, I wanted it to be a slightly different grey to this, but my airbrush has completely died, so I've had to order a new one. Not very expensive, though. However, that does mean it's not going to arrive in time for the tournament that I want to get this board ready for, so I decided to use the grey spray paint that I had available, so that's what colour it is. And next thing, I'm going to put a big layer of heavily watered-down black paint all over it and then wipe most of it off. But before that, we've got a few bits to pick out in silver, like the grating and some of the supports. So that's next. And then after that, I'm going to work on the centre of the board with the foam, which I'm then going to texture up and get it all attached. I'm painting this first because I'm going to colour the texture, so it's going to be quite grey in colour. So it doesn't matter that this is painted first, because I'm not going to be spraying the rest of the board. And then there's going to be lots of dry brushing going on later on. You'll see what I mean anyway in a minute. Well, here we are after the incredibly messy wash phase. You can see the remnants of the mixture here, which is a combination of very cheap paint and water. Smushed together nicely and then applied to this terrine. It's applied and then quite rapidly wiped off again. So it does stay mostly in the crevices and only slightly stains the regular colour rather than completely covering it and making it look very silly indeed. So a very cheap and quick way of doing it. It does go through quite a lot of tissue though, wiping it all off. I'm sure you could use a sponge or something. I decided to add a couple of little bits of colour to it. For example, little purple squares in each of the corners. You can see the various silver bits as well, like here, and the little bits sticking out here where it's all destroyed and mangled, and then of course these bits of ruined rubble here that are going to go over on this ruined side. I've decided the next step I'm going to dry brush at this, mainly the underside of it because that's not going to be as easy to reach once it's all assembled together. So that's the next bit, and then I'm going to move on to the foam. The dry brushing stage is complete, and I think it makes quite a big difference to the terrain. You can see a lot more of the detail, it looks a lot less bland. You may notice that there's a big pile of large books right in the middle of it at the moment. That is because I've actually stuck the foam down onto this wood underneath in the centre. So that's going to be drying for a while, with these largest of large books atop it. And then it's going to be time to texture it up and press this outer frame area, which isn't currently attached to anything, that's going to be pushed into it, so that should secure it in place nicely. Okay, so you can see here that I've got all the pieces lined up how they're going to be when it's finished, including this rubble down here. I think it's going to look pretty damn tasty. And this is going to be the final update before the texture is applied, and then it's pretty much finished from there, it's just going to be a lot of dry brushing onto the actual earth texture. The messiest stage is complete, and it's been moved into the kitchen due to the potential for mess. As you can see that we're very, very close to the finished article now. So, this texture, which was made from filler, sand, black paint, and PVA glue, I added more black paint to it until I was happy with the level of greyness. I didn't want it to be too light, so I'm going to be dry brushing over it with a light grey, just to bring out the texture even more. And I think it looks quite tasty already. I spread it over the whole thing, made sure it's not too thick anywhere, tried to fill in all these gaps along the side here, so that no one can see down between the terrain and the, the foam centre. So hopefully I've accomplished that. That's the intention anyway. There's not supposed to be any visible gap down there. We have a look down here, you can see that I've also filled in all the way up to the edge of the door. And I've pressed in the bits of rubble down there. I think this is all looking very, very nice indeed. I'm liking the look of the texture, I think it's going to look extra juicy when it's all dry brushed up. I've put some lines into it after it was all applied, just while it was drying with a simple tool. It's not 100% accurate, but you can see roughly where all the cubes are. So I think that will suffice. And you can see I put them down the sides as well. I'm sure this is going to be quite heavy, but I haven't tried picking it up yet because I'm going to leave it at least a day to make sure that everything is completely 100% dry. And then after that, it's the dry brushing process, 
and then probably just some rust effects all over the place just to make it look a bit more interesting and after that we are complete so the next time you see this the final update video will be the finished article and I'm sure everyone is feverishly anticipating that